Hello and welcome to another wonderful edition of Iron Port, the program that has been designed to bring Ghana's sports and maritime industry closer to you. At Iron Port, we also discuss trading issues that have some direct or indirect effect on the ports and maritime business. It is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Goyal PLC Serene Insurance, Ghana Link, the Meridian Port Services, and Phoenix Insurance. I am Port is powered by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority and our media partner is the Business and Financial Times. Viewers, there's some good news for those of us in the trade and transport sector. This is because there's been some significant progress when it comes to the much touted Abidjan to Lagos Highway Corridor project uh, with some small bit of construction work that has already begun in Nigeria. Um, this week we decided to delve into this subject and find out more details about the progress of work when it comes to this particular Abidjan to Lagos Highway project and how it is expected to impact cross-border trade in Africa. Upcoming is a summary of this particular discussion. Take a listen. I want to find out from you what exactly it is that went into the reasoning of this particular project. The Abidjan Lagos Corridor Highway project yes. mm. is one of the pillars yes. of African Union's program for infrastructure development in Africa, mm. um, usually called the PIDA. Okay. This was born out somewhere in 2013 mm. in Addis Ababa, which identified the Abidjan Lagos Corridor as one of the most viable trade routes. Mm. And so they charged the ECOWAS, who also, together with the heads of state of these five countries, namely Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire, mm. to sign a treaty um, in March 2014. Under the treaty, they all agreed to develop the highway as a single project. Right. They also then charged ECOWAS to facilitate the project. Mm. And then again, they also s instituted a steering committee, which is made up of all the ministers in charge of infrastructure, works, rules in the various countries, right. together with the commissioner of infrastructure of ECOWAS uh, to lead in the preparation towards the construction of the road project. Mm. So when in earnest is this uh, particular project supposed to kickstart? We are hoping that portions of it mm. um, will start in next year. Mm. But in countries like Nigeria, they have already started. started. Okay, so I understand there have been some stakeholder consultations as well? Yes, we did. In Ghana? In Ghana. Yes. You know, Ghana's portion out of the 1,028 kilometers is five. 176. We have more than half of the entire mm. corridor, mm. making Ghana's role in this project very, very crucial. Yeah. So ours starts from uh, Elubo, mm. the border with um, Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire, yes. It crosses all the way. Um, we go through, in fact, a lot of the alignment lies on Virgin because we do not want to, we did an environmental and social impact assessment. assessment. And so there were a lot of criteria used to identify the corridor. Mm. When we get to Budumburam, for instance, we are bypassing Accra, going through the Aquapim Hills, where yes. we are hoping that we will construct almost a three kilometer um, tunnel. Yes. And then that will then lead us to join the uh, existing N1, okay. um, not on the existing one, but by it's around Muichu. Mm, mm. And then we'll continue, bypass a few um, settlements, and then we will end up at Akanu. Okay. We currently have a joint border post, post at yes. Akanu yes. with um, Togo. Okay. And so that's where the road from Ghana is going to go. Okay. The average economic internal rate of return along the entire corridor is about 15. Yes. But that section is about 17, 17 making it sure. more, the more, most profitable um, um, corridor. Right. Yeah. I mean, that particular aspect, which fortunately lies in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of investors are, investors are interested. In fact, 
they have come to us expressing interest, interest. but we are waiting for the final designs to be completed. Okay. And of course, the project to come to the design phase to come to an end. Right. We have a component of restructuring the PPP aspect. Mm. And so all of those things will have to be completed before we would know where to go. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So can you uh, paint a picture, picture of what it will look like compared to what it is currently? Okay. So this is going to be a highway mm. that will not be interrupted. Okay. You cannot enter and exit the highway mm. just the way we do now when somebody drives from his or her house yeah. and enters yeah. the motorway or enters Temaflao or anything. Yeah. No. Before mm. you can enter the motorway, you will have to either go through an e entry or mm. an exit. Mm. And so that will be what we call the grid separation. Mm. Uh, every community will be connected, yeah. but not directly. Mm. So before you can move onto the road, you will have to go through an authorized channel mm. before you can un enter the road. Yeah. Remember, we are looking to reap the benefits of the road. Right. And the uh, Alcoma, the uh, management authority, will be managing the operations of this road. Mm. So you would go through it the same way, and you can exit also the same, same way. way. We have a lot of underpasses for animals crossing. Right. We have a lot of underpasses mm. for pedestrians mm. as well. There is no go uh, where the community is big, is going to, uh, we are going to have an interchange. Yeah. So we don't have one particular interchange design. Depending on the location mm. and the connection to the road, right. the interchanges are different. Mm. So that's why I mentioned grid separation. Yes. So it is a thorough road that will start from Lagos. We'll have a few um, fuel stations, other load control stations. Once, if you're, if if you you, you once you enter the road, yeah. there will be an automated azo uh, station. Right. If you go beyond the, the load limit. limit automatically you will go off okay. the road. You, have, you are with the Borderless Alliance. You've traversed the nooks and crannies of the sub-region and the continent at large and even beyond. And you know what the issues are uh, because one of the things you do is uh, advocacy uh, in terms of uh, trade facilitation to ensure fluid you know, passage of goods and persons and all that. I just want to find out from you uh, if you can paint a picture of what the existing state of this particular road is and what some of the challenges are that you have identified uh, that will perhaps be eliminated once this uh, project is, is done? That's a good question. Thank you. And uh, I want first to say that personally, I have driven all the way from Elubo to Semekrake mm. on that stretch of the Abidjan Lagos corridor. Mm. And it's one of the most pleasurable experiences of driving through on these ways. Right. And you can see that there's a lot of potential, whether tourism, whether trade when we have free movement mm. along this corridor, but we don't have that kind of free movement, actually. What we have seen through the caravan or the, or, or the fact-finding missions that we have taken in collaboration with various stakeholders and partners in Ghana, we partner with Ghana Shippers Authority on the Ghana portion of the road, but we have taken a mission along the whole length of Abidjan Lagos Corridor in March 2018. Before that, we have conducted a study with uh, Wildaf, with, uh, with, uh, with Profab. Uh, and then later on, we had the diagnostic study along some of the corridors. And we have interacted with many of the women cross-border traders mm. and the traders in general, especially at the border crossings, right. where we found most of the significant barriers, which are not, trade bar which are not tariff barriers. Mm. The barriers are more non-tariff mm. in nature, which mm. means that they're not exactly barriers, but they are things like, for example, the non-recognition of the documentation that comes from across the border, right. even though there is supposedly one harm harmonized because we are all under ECOWAS, right? Mm. So if you have an ECOWAS generate, let's say, certificate of origin where it is necessary, yeah. once you have it coming from Ghana, then automatically you'd assume that going into Cote d'Ivoire, for example, they will take it. Or, for example, under ETLS, if you are registered in one country along the corridor, you are moving yeah. 
but then before you know it that you are stopped because you are required for additional documentation, mm. additional tariffs, even though you are entitled to uh, zero, uh, du du zero duty, zero quota along this corridor for registered products. Yes. And so there are frustrations from the trade communities, mm. but also there are frustrations from the ordinary passengers and the movers across these corridors. Mm. Because look, a road corridor is not simply the road that you move on. Right. The road is very important. If mm. there's no road mm. in good state to move across, mm. then you wouldn't even use it. But the importance is that where people go, trade goes. Mm. And so you have this, uh, you have this element of the fluidity of the movement which is non-existent, and then you have the difficulty of moving across borders. Right. And so when people are very, uh, find difficulties in moving along the corridor, it mm. makes their movement difficult, it makes trade minimal. Yes. Now there's one very particular uh, uh, element that I want to tell you, a particularity actually, about the Abidjan-Lagos corridor, mm. about its economic nature. And you know, there are many ways to define a corridor. I will not go into the nomenclature. However, right. interestingly, people think that the Abidjan-Lagos economic activity is actually commercial activity that goes from Abidjan to Lagos, Lagos yeah. and passing through some of these cities. Mm. While actually what we've seen from our observations and interactions, we have come to the conclusion that the majority of the activity that takes place along the Abidjan-Lagos corridor is not actually commercial cargo moving along the corridor. Right. It's actually groupings of economic activities that take place either at the borders, where cross-border traders will meet in markets and exchange goods, mm. apparels, food products, items, uh, beads, or you, you name it. Mm. And, and it, the accumulation and aggregation of all of these ac uh, activities mm. make up the economic activity that takes place along the Abidjan-Lagos corridor. Mm. Keep in mind that Abidjan-Lagos corridor passes through five countries which make up about 88% of the total economic activity of West Africa. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that the entirety of each of these countries' economies go through the corridor, right. obviously, but it makes up a significant section of the entire sub-region. Mm. And so this is how you gauge the economic viability of this particular corridor, because mm. it unlocks mm. the potential of trading among this significant sub-group uh, sub, uh, uh, yes. within the ECOWAS. Mm. And that is why it is very crucial to have a good infrastructure yeah. that connects the main coastal cities across West Africa mm. to ensure fluidity of movement of cargo, but also the fluidity of the movement of people who trade. Mm. Mm. Awesome. Um, I just want to find out from you, um, you listed some of the challenges uh, that we have along that route. Um, if you look at it and look at the completion of this particular project, do you think that we can eliminate some of these challenges? So I think it will help significantly. Mm. However, it will have to be complemented by a focus on the soft infrastructure. Mm. If we focus on the hard infra infrastructure alone, mm. that is the roads, the amenities along these roads, I'm sure engineer will tell us more about that they have thought, for example, of pit stops, resting areas, mm. safety of the roads, mm. security of the roads, and things like that. So that right. is very helpful. Mm. However, if you don't look at the soft infrastructure aspects, that is, for example, the trade facilitation at the borders, the, uh, the availability of the services from the border agencies, mm. the mutual recognition of the trade documentation across the countries, right. and then a clarification or simplification of the trade procedures at mm. these borders. Then you might have the best of highways, but then you get choked at the border crossings, as you know. All right, viewers, we hope that particular discussion brought you up to speed uh, with the progress of work when it comes to Abidjan Lagos Highway Corridor Project. And we promise to update you in future when we get more information. Now, let us pick a few comments on the subjects that we have just discussed after we go on break, and then we'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Hello, I am Port. Very useful discussion there. I am happy to hear that Ghana has the largest portion of the road. That means our leaders have a lot of responsibility on their shoulders to see to the successful, timely completion of the road project. This is Abigail Intema. This one comes from Theophilos Intema. He says, Aiko, it is good work you are doing regarding the highway. Please, is what is going on along Dawenya Road part of the Abidjan-Lagos Highway? Hi, Theophilos. Thanks for the question. 
A resource person from the Roads and Highway Ministry says, no, the road is not part of the Abidjan Lagos Highway, but it will merge with an interchange to the Abidjan Lagos project. This one comes from Kwame Safo in Kumasi. He asks, all you are saying brings improvement in our lives, but what about the Ekowa single currency? It will also facilitate the movement of goods and services. Hello Kwame, the national president of the Borderless Alliance agrees that finance is part of the challenges associated with regional integration. In particular, in West Africa, we have six currencies, which at times are not recognized as legal tender in some countries, making trade and transactions costly. He said, while a common ECOWAS currency is a desirable long-term goal, it is better to think about currency interconvertibility in the shorter term, while we work on converging our economies to become more integrated. Every now and again, Goil makes good things happen. This time, Goil has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goal Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goal Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Electricity, electricity, then pay your taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Sell it It doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high seas covered with the marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating great opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302 246319 
or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. Thanks for staying. Now let us move on to our local news segment. Like other signatories, Ghana's commitment to the World Trade Organization's Trade Facilitation Agreement and the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement places some responsibility on the country. The TFA contains provisions for expediting the movement, release and clearance of goods and sets out measures for effective cooperation between customs and other appropriate authorities on trade facilitation and customs compliance issues. In light of this, a regional after trade facilitation team has visited the port of Tema to ascertain the level of operational efficiency at the port. At the MPS Terminal 3, the team interacted extensively with management of MPS who explained efforts being undertaken to make the port of Tema a trade hub in the region and beyond. What was interesting uh, uh, for them to realize that uh, uh, we are not only providing you know, capacity, but also we're providing productivity, fast turnaround of vessel, and also predictability. Basically, importers and exporters, they can actually connect on a weekly basis to a specific service or to several services because we have divided the week into slots, time slots, which we call birthing windows. And on those birthing windows, every week, same time, same slot, you know, one shipping line service comes to it. So basically, if you are shipping to the Far East on a specific service that comes on Monday at 8 a.m., every Monday 8 a.m., actually, you can count on it. MPS will berth that ship alongside and your cargo will be loaded. Basically, when you talk of free facilitation, it's basically it should be targeted towards what we call automation or digitization. And basically, when you look at the activities here, basically all the activity that's or operational activity that goes on here is being digitized. And that is why you can see that in terms of the issue of trade facilitation has to do with cost and time of doing business. So when you look at the, the, the digital operation, it tells you that you know, the time of doing business is something that is very efficient. In that related development, the Chief Executive Officer of the Meridian Port Services, Mohamed Samara, has encouraged producers and industries within the African continent to take advantage of the benefits and discounts the free continental trade provides. He said the blossoming port sector in Ghana, for example, provides an enabling environment to support industries in the new era of free trade. Angola all the way to Nwakshot, you know, more or less, uh, we are about uh, three to four hundred million producer stroke consumer. So this is a huge market. And also, if you look at the GDP, you know, of this block, you know, it's seven to eight hundred billion, you know, so that's quite a lot. You know, Nigeria alone, you know, as a market represents 220 consumers, you know. So we are, if we are growing into becoming, you know, half a billion, for example, consumers within this range and a little bit beyond, because the AFTA goes into the whole continent. If we target half a billion consumers and they do two shirts a year, that's a billion shirts, you know, to be consumed in this market on annual basis. So that's a lot of cargo, a lot of industry to be built on for whether it is uh, food and uh, drug or whether it's uh, a beverage, whether it's uh, a, a clothing or even home goods and consumer, various consumer uh, goods. So the market is really tremendous, huge, and we encourage a lot of people to take advantage actually of the benefits and the discounts that AFTA provide for the industrials that can come and manufacture in West Africa. The CEO of MPS called for more investment that will complement efforts in the port sector to achieve the goals of the AFTA. Mohamed Samara also revealed that the phase two of the Terminal 3 expansion project will be launched before end of May. As a matter of fact, hopefully within a week or two, before the end of this month, we will launch the uh, construction of the second phase of MPS port expansion project, you know, and uh, that is uh, a project that will uh, put at least uh, 50 to 60 million dollar worth of investment into the country's infrastructure. And uh, also, we have placed on order uh, additional cranes, uh, that's waterfront capacity as well as yard capacity to the tune of 75 million. So basically there is a, at least 100, 150 million lined up 
you know, committed investment, you know, towards the expansion of the sport infrastructure. The Seaburn Surgeon, an ultra-luxury cruise vessel, has visited Ghana for the first time since 2020 when COVID-19 broke out. Indeed, the vessel is the Sith cruise vessel to visit Ghana's ports under three months and the third to call the port of Tema within the said period. The 198-meter long and 25-meter wide vessel operated by Seaburn Cruise Line and sailing under the flag of Bahamas brought 330 tourists to Ghana as part of a cruise expedition across the Atlantic. I mean, they've started coming since last year, you know, but this year we've seen more ships because COVID is pretty much all gone now. And not only in this destination, but in the other destinations that we operate in, Togo, Beni, Abidjan as well, in Dakar as well. So they're coming back. We expect more of these ships to be here later this year and definitely a lot more next year. It's about visiting the shops, visiting the malls, the other tourists tourist sites and I think these are some of the some of the things that we should be encouraging in our country it's a it's a preferred it's a one of the safe ports in in this sub region and it's a preferred uh, port so I believe we have a lot of things that people need to come and have such an experience now if you ask all the people on board the passenger the crew they'll tell you that we love to always be in Ghana the vessel is expected to continue its voyage to selected ports in the West Africa sub-region on its expedition. It has visited Togo, Benin, the Gambia, among other African countries in the past few weeks. Let us take our lenses to the global stage and pick a few international shipping and maritime related news. The South Korean government announced a series of new initiatives planned to further support the domestic shipbuilding industry. This is meant to consolidate the leadership position built over the past two years as the industry rebounded while also recognizing the growing competition and need to develop new technologies. According to the South Korean government, it would be expanding its investment to support the development of new technologies while also increasing the foreign worker programs and providing new financial support programs all designed to expand South Korea's position in the industry. The announcement of the new programs comes as the shipbuilding industry is under pressure as global orders have slowed since late 2022. A US Coast Guard cutter made a major drug bust in the Gulf of Oman on Monday seizing more than $30 million of heroin and meth from aboard a fishing vessel. Fast response cutter USC GC Glenn Harris was operating in support of Combined Maritime Forces Combined Task Force 150 in the Gulf of Oman when the crew spotted a suspicious vessel. Upon boarding, they found 580 kilos of methamphetamine and another 35 kilos of heroin. Glenn Harris crew seized another $48 million worth of drugs in a boarding last October, another $20 million worth of hash and amphetamine in August 2022, and $28 million worth of heroin and meth in two busts in May 2022. It's now time for our Word of the Day segment where we introduce words, phrases, jargons, and terminologies from this industry so you can get familiar with them. Today, we'll tell you who a ship broker is. A ship broker is a specialist intermediary or negotiator between ship owners and charters who use ships to transport cargo or between buyers and sellers of vessels. It's now time for the schedule of vessels that have berth in the ports of Tema and Takrade and at the anchorages of both ports and those expected in the coming weeks, plus the Bank of Ghana action rates, which you may need to know to clear your cargo with.
This is where we end today's edition of Iron Port. We hope you've been informed and educated. Remember, all Iron Port content can be found on our YouTube channel, Iron Port. Subscribe, like, and give us feedback. Thank you for watching.